Do it. New, 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 new. <laughs> new, new, new. Yeah. All okay. right. We got new products time. Yeah, we got a couple books to start off with. Yeah. Okay. This is Girl CEO. You're Girl, Girl CEO. CEO. I'm Girl CEO. I'm in it. But there were also some wonderful interviews and advice from all sorts of women from uh, Heidi Grinnell, Ayanna Howard, uh, it's like Venus Williams. Oprah Winfrey, me. And you. And I'm drawn and I'm wearing a nice blue and black shirt. Yeah, that's me. And look at me doing electronics. Um, But yeah, I can uh, use Witherspoon so I can go through some of the people in here. But this is like a really cool book. And it's not just for girls. I just think, I mean, I think anyone who is interested in hearing about um, information and and, uh, information experiences of women in the kind of companies that they're building. Um, whether it be media or fashion or art or technology or um, toys. This is cool. It's like a Kickstarter for Goldie Blocks, if you've tried Goldie Blocks. Um, SD Lauder. Wow, that's cool. So there's um, a pretty much anybody, everybody. A lot of people are in here. There's me. There's some electronics. Yay. Building stuff. Okay. Um, Check it out. You know, no matter what your interests are, I think there's somebody in here that you'll probably be inspired by. And of course, the drawings are really cool as well. Yeah, I think for a while, like the term CEO is like, oh, it's like a guy, like CEO male. You know, you don't. Recently, things have changed. Progress is happening, but I think uh, if if you're a young person, especially if you're a young girl, if you see other people that you can imagine yourself being, which is a great book to have like this, you're like, oh, I can imagine myself being someone like that, doing something like that, pursuing that type of. Yeah. field running that type of company and it gives you ideas for the kind of, of work that you might like some people are like I don't know what I want to be when I grow up yeah. maybe I want to be Taylor Swift um, but this gives you a lot of uh, options and things to be inspired by so I'm into it it's a really wonderful book yep um, and we're carrying some of them and it's even uh, printed uh, only like a mile away Canal Street yep okay next up next up um, another book uh, popular for uh, female CEOs at least the one I know it's 2600 no, 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 no. quarterly. Um, so we have an article in here, and um, we picked up a couple issues yeah. of this. We do an article per quarter together, Lady Ada and I, called Citizen Engineer, um, based on kind of our series of videos, but uh, we had some extras. Yeah, but there's, there's you know, the, from the classic payphones to um, articles about Bitcoin to how to keep your privacy secure. Um, this is um, from winter 2000. Uh, 18 yep. but uh, check it out if you are interested I mean the stuff that never goes bad I mean this is still uh, really useful information collect them and uh, pick up a copy and they're make great gifts especially if you know someone who is a little bit of a troublemaker and maybe they don't even know about 2600 because it's yep. not as easy to get it in bookstores anymore it used to be available in bookstores but there are fewer bookstores now um, so this is why you want to pick it up when you place an order okay y'all wanted them we have them USB-C cables. Yay! I'm so happy I'm sneezing. Um, USB-C sure. cables, we have them in one meter long and uh, one third of a meter long, one foot long. So three foot, one foot. You mostly want it for this. Yeah, basically if you have a modern Mac and you want to plug in your circuit plug on Express or your Metro or your Not Trinket. This, that, to that. To that. For this. For this. So you have two lengths. Yeah. Um, they're good quality cables. I got one with nice, uh, they have uh, shielding on them that's grounded. We tested them all. We tested them all and we tested them a lot of different ways and these are pretty good. So um, they're set up to be used by any computer for USB and they've got a resistor in them and everything that they need. It basically, they just work. Um, so I've tried them on Windows and Mac and now you can too. Very okay. simple, but very useful. This motor, and this GIF is a really useful GIF because it actually shows you pretty much what it does. This motor is um, used for um, locks, like a door, it's a door lock mechanism motor. Um, it's kind of, you know, we have a lot of standard motors in the store. We have like servos and DC gear motors. And and this is kind of a weird one um, because it only, it, the, the gift here jumps, but it, it goes all the way left and all the way right. So I can show it on um, the overhead. Let me zoom in because this is small. Okay. So then you've got your five volt power supply and you can power this with a cricket, of course. Um, and then if you power it one way, it, it well, it's already on the way. So let's uh, connect the other way. So you reverse polarity 
And you see, it slowly but surely rotates 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise. Yeah, and then focus when you. It a little bit. Oh, it's not focused. Mm, there we go. Oh, sorry. Okay, let me do that again. So I'll do it the other way. So now, clockwise. And it's like geared like 1 to 2,000. It's incredibly strong and it's got this notch. And um, it just stops when you get to the opposite you know, side. So open or closed. Basically, if you want like a very strong motor, like a very high gear ratio that runs on five volts and has like these mounting holes. And then, you know, this slot that you can machine yeah. or 3D print something, something that needs to twist. Um, not a lot of motors can give you this torque. And so this is kind of what I thought this was good for. I mean, if it's good enough to open and close a door, it's going to be good enough for some project that you have that I can't even imagine. Um, but they're pretty inexpensive motors, and you can see this is the DC motor and this is the gearbox. And of course, you can also take it apart and, and reuse parts of it if you'd like. It's a, a nicely designed motor, and I like how it's got these mounting tabs and everything. So it's a geared DC lock motor. Useful if you okay. need to do that sort of thing. Next up, a 3D printer. Yeah, this is the Monoprice Wi-Fi printer. Uh, they contacted us, and we've actually heard some good things about the Monoprice printers. This is a nice printer, it's all enclosed. It can print PLA. Um, it doesn't have a heated bed, but it has auto leveling support. Uh, here's a time lapse no and Pedro made. They actually tested uh, this printer for us for a month or two. And uh, we said, you know, is this printer good enough to, for us to carry? And they said, yeah. Um, they, you know, they're always looking for the best, easiest thing to use. This is a very easy to use. It's a great first printer. Um, yep. The price is good. Um, it's small, but it has a pretty good build uh, volume, it prints PLA, it's easy, it works with all the software you would expect, and yeah, the auto leveling apparently works quite well and will save you a lot of effort. So this is a good beginner printer at a very good price. Okay, next up. Um, this is a coming soon. This is a, a Gboard AT kit. Uh, we uh, published a guide on how to use a Circuit Playground Express with Android Gboard. That's a uh, Morse code input for assistive technology or maybe other projects. And this is a kit that lets you build a solder-free um, Gboard accessory. You know, you have those two uh, tack switches, sorry, the two uh, lever switches, alligator clips, so you can clip it to the Circuit Playground Express. And we even include a USB cable so you can program it. And then you see the USB on the Go cable, you can plug that into your Android tablet or device. Um, you can even use it with iOS. Uh, I think they have a Gboard app as well. Yeah. And then uh, you can make your own custom Morse code interfaces. So we'll have more guides coming out with that and um, more ways of using it, but it's coming soon. Uh, so check back maybe in a week and we'll put yeah. those in Good work Google adding, uh, they work with the um, AT community. Uh, there's a neat story we posted about that. Yeah. And Morse code is useful for all sorts of things, even though Morse code is not part of the ham radio exam anymore that That's was right. removed. And uh, that being said, it still has incredible uses for many, many people. It's, I mean, it's perfect for AT when you, if you can have one or two switches that somebody can press or use a sip and puff, yep. and then you can convert that using Morse code. I mean, they've already figured out what's the best way to, or one of the best ways to convert simple, uh, you know, switch on off into characters. They've already figured out the encoding. The coding is universal. Yeah. There's learning systems online to learn Morse code. Like it's. It's, it's an ancient protocol, but it works really well. Yep. Okay, next up. All right. You all are going to love this. You guys wanted this. Now we have it. NeoPixel silicone, like... Yes. NeoPixel silicone neon strip. So there's a lot of neo there. Um, I'm just going to go right to the overhead, because it looks so good in that photo, or the video that we have here. Yeah. But it even looks amazing in person. Wait, um, it's, it's so gonna amazing. It's going to blow out this, yeah. Ah, oh, it's just looks great okay it looks really good it's it's kind of a little dark here because it's there's so much light you can see it actually you can see better on the video um, in person you can barely tell that there is that little bit of uh, hot spotting between them but in in, in person your eyes kind you can't of, say it, yeah. yeah your eyes kind of blurred all out but it's a neopixel strip it's true neopixel compatible so it doesn't use like some weird AC 9302 chip this is the WS 2811 works with any and all NeoPixel libraries and code. So if you, have, if you have code and it says NeoPixel 800 kilohertz, it'll work. Python, CircuitPython, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, all that good stuff. Yeah, again, um, this, is, this is what it looks like in the dark. But I, I mean. It looks, it looks good either way. Yeah. 
It just looks great. Um, it's coated with silicone. Uh, on one end, there's a JST connector, and you can plug that in uh, and then connect it to, I have a Metro here. Um, the only thing is that the power pin is 12 volts. So it's a 12 volt power, but the signal in is five volts so that you can use your standard um, Metro signal out, or if you have three volt, yeah, you probably want to try level shifting it. Um, just because sometimes the, sometimes it works on three volts, but I don't guarantee it. You can power this from nine or 12 volts. Uh, nine volts it'll work, 12 volts it looks brighter and better. And um, yeah, it's pretty easy. It's got the, the ceiling on the end here. We're gonna carry one meter strips to start and when people like it, we'll carry longer strips, but they are, they're kind of chunky and big. They're not as skinny and as flexible as the single color because the strip is thicker and so there's even more silicone to diffuse it, but it looks great. There's 60 LEDs in well, the one meter strip, but they're in chunks of three because it's not like you can get individual LED. Like you couldn't see the difference between having one or three pixels because it's so diffused. So it looks in NeoPixel land like 20 pixels, but there's actually 60 total LEDs. So you get good coverage and you only need enough memory to do 20 LED pixels. So um, that's that, but this has been in demand and we've been wanting to carry this for years and I've got so many samples and they were always really bad. Yeah, like, there's a giant bin. There's a of, bin here somewhere. It's right there. Look, it looks like a, oh, a yeah. bunch of dead snakes inside of it. <laughs> it's right there. Is that one? That's one of them. Yeah, I yeah. can show, I can bring, I can toss those all out. They were, I got so many samples from many companies and they were either way too chunky or they needed like 120 volts or like 24 volts or they weren't really NeoPixel and so like there wasn't good library support. But I finally spec'd and got a company to make me exactly what I want. Um, so other than the 12 volt part, it's pretty much what you expect from new pixel strips and yeah. it's flexible. So, um, you know, it's not for going underwater for, it's not meant for People always ask, oh, can I, can I submerge something completely underwater? No, not this. Not suggested. Um, it's just not designed for it, but it can be used, you know, outside in a protected matter. Just check in on it, of course. Don't have it soaking in water because yeah. even though it's sealed, you know, it, especially if you're exposing it to UV. At, at it best, of, water resistant. It's water resistant, it's weatherproof. Uh, there's a rating, but it's not for long-term submersion. Sorry, okay. that's actually quite difficult to have something um, that can be long-term submerged, has to be. Yeah, I'm subscribed like, to like really the, LED, the LED newsletter, the LED Sign Association. If you want to go that way, it's like, oh, like you're gonna spend tens you're of thousands of dollars. You're gonna spend a lot yeah. more, but 30 bucks is what you get. Okay, next up. Okay, the store of the show. Store of the show, and the cool little pixel neon is the cricket bit. The cricket bit. That's the colloquial name. Yeah. It's the cricket from Microbit. This is the best, easiest, low cost way to make robotic projects with a Microbit. Yeah, it's and here. it's super easy to use. The make code uh, library we have works perfectly with it. Uh, you plug your circuit, sorry, your circuit, plug your Microbit into the slot. It even powers the Microbit. Um, from the DC power jack, so you can have your projects just powered from batteries or DC. And it totally extends um, your capabilities Oop. quite a bit. So here, you know, the micro bit slots in, and we even added a little marking here to tell you that the LEDs goes on this way. If you want to program the uh, micro bit, you just plug into the USB, or you can power from here. Yep. You get four solenoids or small DC motors, the drive transistors, or like an LED strip. You've got two bi-directional DC motors. So you can have like a two-wheel drive robot. Um, speaker output. The speaker is connected to pin uh, zero, which is the um, default audio output pin for make code. So if you're making sounds in make code, uh, you can get a speaker and it will uh, make the sounds to that. NeoPixel. This is connected to pin 16, which is a, you know, a free pin available. And uh, that way you can use um, the built-in um, make code NeoPixel controller, which is a really good controller. Uh, we've got uh, upgradable Seesaw capability. Uh, capacitive touch, so you get four pads of capacitive touch. Over here, you get eight analog or digital I.O. signals. So, um, you know, this is plugged in. You can get to some of the pins, but there's not actually a lot of GPIO pins available on the micro bit because a lot of them are shared with um, the matrix. So here you get an extra eight pins for analog inputs or digital outputs and four servo output connections for controlling any kind of analog or digital servo. Um, so all together, and then of course, you know, we broke out all the pins if you want to connect to them for some reason. 
But this basically unlocks all of the robotics projects you want for a micro bit. And uh, the Arduino library just works because it's all over the I2C chip and that's nothing has changed there. So you can use the Arduino library right now. You can follow our guide on um, micro bit for Arduino or you can use make code and install our plugin and it works really nicely. Yep. It's very elegant. And it drag and drop, drag and make and drop, robot. do everything. And of course that you fast. can use whatever is added you know they have the radio module whatever for make code you can add that as well so you can do all sorts of stuff you can control the matrix uh read the sensors uh there's accelerometer magnetometer on it so you can make like motion control stuff um and the radio and then add all those robotics which is nice is that none of these things are things that are built into the micro bit like there isn't a buffered neopixel or speaker driver so there's no overlap you're getting kind of a whole new fresh uh collection of parts and um Look at how nice that it like slots right in. It's almost like I designed it to work that way. Yep. Um, so now we've got the feather cricket. Um, we've got the circuit playground cricket, of course, and the micro bit cricket. So that's, we're kind of cricketed up for a bit. And yeah, we'll do have the Raspberry Pi one too. The Raspberry Pi hat, which is going to be a hat, not a cricket shape board. But what's nice is that this is, this everything is in the same location. So if you see a circuit playground project and you want to make it with a micro bit, you can do it. Yep. One thing that doesn't quite work yet. Uh, but we'll be looking at it is the MicroPython. Um, we have a CircuitPython library, but not MicroPython. A lot of people tend to use MakeCode, though, because um, the MicroPython on the microbit is very constrained. So even if we do add support, it's not going to be as fully featured as MakeCode. You're not going to get as much cool stuff. So I recommend MakeCode, honestly. That's the best way to use the microbit. And there's no solder. Just plug it in yeah. and terminal blocks, power You're making it. robots. Making robots. So we'll be making some cool robots with the micro bit, and we'll take advantage of uh, some of the cool things that are built into uh, the micro bit for the micro bit cricket. Yeah. Now do pot ups. 